So uh, we just spoke about uh, this uh, relationship of, uh, between the stress and the work environment. And stress is also related to the sleep deprivation. And uh, I reflect back on my own residency uh, year, and I know that how prevalent it is and how uh, difficult uh, it, it can be on a personal, personal health. So I'll share some very important statistics and some uh, important concept about the sleep deprivation and the quality of the work. And again, uh, we need to be proactive in managing uh, our uh, sleep, uh, sleep deprivation or lack of sleep uh, in order to promote our own health as well as health of the uh, patient. So we know from um, literature actually the sleep deprivation is very closely linked to the work quality. Uh, sleep deprivation has the greatest impact on mood and cognitive ability rather than the motor ability. So uh, this is important to recognize that many of our decision will be based on our cognitive ability and up after sleep deprivation, the decision making can be impaired and also the mood, how we interact with the uh, interprofessional environment can be adversely affected after uh, sleep deprivation. Uh, we also know from the studies that sleep deprivation also affects the clinical performance of the doctor and it, it actually it impacts on the patient safety. Uh, here are other, some of the other concepts which I want you to, um, 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 I want you to uh, think about that if you, the acute, acute sleep deprivation, for example, you get sleep deprived for about continuously for 24 hours, and, and a chronic sleep deprivation, meaning that you get an inadequate sleep uh, over a period of uh, one week or so, both are equally, equally harmful. It both will affect you adversely. And another misconception that we have that we can be accustomed to uh, uh, chronic sleep deprivation, the answer is no. There is no such thing about heavy, uh, you know, getting habituated to chronic sleep deprivation. So you have to get um, adequate sleep throughout. You cannot get uh, habituated to you know, lack of sleep. And it also, we know that effect of this uh, chronic sleep deprivation seems to be accumulative. So the more you are uh, 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 sleep, sleep deprived, uh, uh, the uh, it will more, more it will affect your clinical judgment. There is a, a clear relationship between the work hour and uh, uh, the, uh, the amount of sleep that we get. It's, uh, it's not a magic, uh, you know, it's not a rocket science. It's easy to understand why. But as you can see that if the work hour is about 60, 80, hour, 80 hours, the average weekly sleep only gets about uh, 40. So that's less than, less than uh, six hours per day, the recommended, uh, recommended uh, 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 sleep uh, time. And in some extreme cases, uh, you know, uh, when the people uh, work extremely long hour, uh, they get very, very uh, poor uh, uh, sleep. So what are the impacts on that? That a single episode of continuous sleep deprivation of 17 hours result, results in poor performance equivalent of 0.5% uh, alcohol level. At 24 hours, continuous wakefulness is associated with the performance deficit equivalent of 0.1% alcohol uh, in the blood. In many countries where uh, uh, drinking is uh, prevalent, uh, they will define the safe alcohol limit about 0.08%. That means to say that chronic sleep deprivation is actually, um, you know, have a huge impact on uh, people's decision-making ability. Another important concept is that uh, the sleep deprived resident were unable to detect their own impairment. So it may not be very apparent to you that you are actually working uh, in a suboptimal cognitive, uh, cognitive ability. So here I quote, um, uh, quote uh, Dr. Baldwin and uh, Dr. Dougherty, uh, loss, of, loss of sleep for resident is cumulative and prolonged, extend over many months and leaves them in a nearly continuous state of chronic partial sleep deprivation. And there's another notion about acute sleep deprivation, typically of, uh, after a busy call night, 
overlays the baseline chronic sleep deprivation and resulting in cumulative sleep depth. So that means to say that if you are sleeping poorly for a week, then you have a particularly busy, uh, busy night, then you are actually much uh, likely to be much more fatigued than, uh, than, than uh, if you had a good, uh, good sleep during the week. So how we can actually improve our sleeping habit? Uh, in medical literature, they will be described as a sleep hygiene. My, my personal take on that, that you target at least six to, seven, six to seven hours of sleep per day, and you have to have a good quality, uninterrupted uh, sleep. That, that means uh, that no phone call in the middle of the night, no SMS, uh, no talking with, the, talking with the friend. You have to thoroughly hand over your patient to your colleagues so that you, when you go back home or to your room, you feel mentally relieved that you have done your duty and you can actually sleep peacefully. Uh, reduce the caffeine intake before going to the bed and never ever jeopardize patients or personal, your own safety. That means driving carefully. And if you are so much sleep deprived, then ask for help and get, a, you know, get someone to drive you back home.